Well hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be making a start on something that I've never done before so we're going to start and I've been giving this some thought you know, the workshop's fairly new as most of you who have followed me for some time will know I've only been going for just over a year spent a lot of time and effort and energy making tools that I'm short of there's plenty more of that still to come there's still lots of tooling that I want to make but being honest just making tool after tool after tool and welding bench and this and that after a while all of that can become a little bit tedious I still enjoy doing what I'm doing but it is nice to think about actually making something that's a bit of a product um, for, for display as opposed to just another tool in the workshop so plenty more tool manufacture to go and largely what I'm going to be doing is making tools to order as I need them if that makes sense so once I get into a job find out I need a tool or I need something making I'll make that up to do the particular job that I'm doing rather than just be tall 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 like this like it's been so what are we going to make so we're going to make a flame eater engine as it's called and this is a design by a guy called Jan Ridders who's Dutch I believe and it's a engine design that he's done himself based on somebody else's original design whose name escapes me at the moment and he designed this for his eldest son as a gift and he's published the plans and made them publicly available um, and I've been in contact with Jan um, and he sent me a set of the plans over I've spent a little bit of time today studying them so what does all of that mean well it's a heat engine it's sometimes referred to as a flame liquor or a flame eater and you can see I've, I've, I'm not going in order on here uh, particularly um, it's a similar principle to a Stirling engine in how it works uh, interesting to note that flame liquor or flame eater engines are less than 5% efficient so actually getting them to run is dependent on quite a lot of engineering required to make sure that the engines have got the least amount of friction possible in all of the moving parts to enable the engine to actually run because they are typically very very inefficient engines so that's going to be a challenge and I'm going to quite enjoy that um, as I've said it's the first engine build that I've ever done I, it's not strictly true I, I copied a an IC engine many many years ago out of a model aircraft managed to get that running that was a glow engine um, but I've never really made one to print um, so this is going to be I'm quite looking forward to this there's lots of sort of features there's lots of parts there's lots of very small parts which is something that I'm not used to both in my own workshop here and also in my career you know most of the stuff I've been dealing with for all of my career has been at least you know a good handful of part and, and sometimes incredibly big parts so making very very tiny small parts is not something I've got a lot of experience of so that's going to be good and I'm planning on making a really nice job of this and having something that I can have probably sat in the house uh, for display that's a running engine so I'm really looking forward to that um, it's going to obviously be a series of videos and there'll be quite many in the series um, I don't know how many yet but there'll be quite a few videos in the series um, where I am just now with this is really right at the start I've studied the drawings I've got some material already in the shop that will make some of the bits and we'll put some of that into this episode and then the follow-on episodes will be making the rest of the parts a lot of that's dependent on me ordering material in and things like that so these episodes are going to run probably interspersed with other episodes you know making tooling as I need it blether videos that kind of thing hints and tips videos and other things as, as they come along so these aren't going to be one after another these will be interspersed but when they're all complete I'll put them all together in a playlist for anybody who wants to sort of watch from beginning to end so that's the plan so what I'm going to do now is move you over to the to the monitor and we'll have a look I'm not going to show all the drawings um, I'm just going to show some 3D models of the finished engine to give you a bit of an idea of what we're going to be building. So we're over at the command and control centre as I called it and you can see here so this is a 3D model of the of the finished engine 
So you can see what we've got, you know, very basic in, in its construction really, in terms of the principle of it. We've got a, you know, a hefty flywheel for the size of the engine, we've got a cylinder, cylinder head. On the front of the cylinder we've got a sliding valve which lets the heat in and out of the engine and the exhaust gases out. And we've got some structure at the bottom for holding all this together. We've got a fuel tank and a burner with a wick in it. And we've got, obviously underneath the bits you can't see, a crankshaft with a crank, various bushes, things like that, and the base for it all to stand on. So the drawings themselves specify different materials for different parts of this. I'm going to be straying away from the plan slightly in terms of material choices. So all of these base sections here are brass and that's you know, largely denoted by the colours. I'm going to be going for aluminium for this base section because I've got some of that handy in the shop. It means I can make a start. Lots of the other pieces of material I need to order in. So the, the cylinder is going to be chromium steel. The crank's probably going to be steel or even stainless steel. Not sure yet. I need some spring steel. I need some stainless for the valve. I need various other bits. I need brass for the for the fuel tank. I need to get myself some silver soldering gear for various bits of this model that need to be silver soldered. So that's something I've never done in the workshop here. I've done it plenty in industry, but not uh, you know at home. So that's I need to get myself geared up with one or two things to make this. Lots of small parts, lots of small taps that I don't own. You know, some of the holes on this are down to M2, so very very small. Uh, holes to tap and there's some very very small parts as part of this build so looking forward to this this is going to be something completely out of my comfort zone something I've never done before and hopefully something interest interesting for you guys to follow along with and and watch me struggling my way through my first engine build yeah you know, as I said it's fairly simplistic so I'm hoping that you know I'm not going to get into too much bother with this I've got a good set of drawings to work off which is good so we'll see how we get on. So I think what we're going to do in this video is start making some of the you know, the base framework for the whole thing to stand on out of the aluminium that I've got in the shop. So I'll bring you back when we're starting to do some of that manufacture. So there's my first three bits of stock cut for making the base. So I'm now going to plan whether we there's a there's a big hole to go in the center of I think two of these I need to check the drawing again and there's some other holes fixing holes and I've got to do some machining of sizes I think these are about nine and a half mil thick at the minute and they need to come down to eight and I've also got some other features to mill in as well so I'm just working out I think I'm going to be putting the large hole in on the lathe using the four jaw and I think that's probably going to go in first because I'm clearly going to mark the mark the part holding it in the four jaw so I might put the big hole in first and then do all of the milling with respect to that hole once that's been put in and then at least that way my finished surfaces then will not have jaw marks in them which you know I really want this to be highly polished and really nice looking when it's done so I'm going to have to think carefully about my setups to make sure that I'm not you know leaving I'm doing them in the right order so that I'm not leaving jaw marks or any other marks in from my setups so I'll bring you back when we know what the first operation is going to be right guys we're at the lathe I've got my four jaw chuck loaded I've, the three bits of aluminium that I've already cut and got ready the off cuts two of them need a 32 mil bore putting through the center now there's two ways I could do this I could do these on the lathe which I'm about to do or I could do them on the milling machine if I'd got a boring head and if I had a boring head that's probably what I'd be doing because the rest of the work on these is milled so what I've done is roughly mark the center just by scribing two diagonal lines and we put a center punch mark in there and we're going to use that to help us line this up quickly in the four yard chuck Right guys, I've moved the camera. What you can see I've done here is I've put the revolving centre in. We've got a fixed centre that's located in the centre pot mark that I put in the front of the plate. And you can see I, I just threw this in here. Any old, any old how it's it's not 
running very 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 good so what we're going to do now is just find the high jaw which is that one and just gradually work this into shape So there we go, that's less than a foul, which for what I'm doing, perfectly good enough, bearing in mind I'm just locating on a on a centre punch mark. So that'll be perfectly good enough. So we'll remove all of this gear now and then we'll get on and put the 32mm hole through the middle. Alright guys, no messing about. This is the biggest drill I've got that will fit in the lathe at the minute. This is 20mm diameter and we're just going to go straight in with that into that big spot drill that I've put in. Okay, we're just going to bore this out now to our 32mm diameter. Right there we go guys, that's got that's got our first plate done with our 32mm bore in it and you can see now why doing these on the lathe why I've done it in the order that I've done it because I don't want those marks on the finished part so I've got stock on all these faces so when I put it on the mill to clean it up to finish size they'll all come out the only thing I need to do is make sure that I clean it up with reference to this centre bore which isn't too difficult to do, fairly, fairly straightforward. So I'll join you on the mill, I'll get the other one done the same and I'll join you on the mill when we start finishing these to finish section and start putting the other features into them on the milling machine. Right guys, I thought before we do anything more to these it'd just be worthy of showing how accurate you can actually be doing what I've just done there. So I didn't really 
painstaking to go over this. It was two quick diagonal lines scribed with a six inch rule on the bench, a centre pop in the middle. You watched me set it up. You know, I didn't spend ages and ages clocking this thing in. I got it somewhere near. So I'm measuring 9.44 that way, 9.45 this way, 9.37. So just to show, you know, for something like this, in fact, it's even closer, 9.42, 9.37. So you can get fairly accurate using that method, using this, that method to clock up using a, a fixed center in the revolving center and just by scribing your center mark out. So we'll go to the mill now and we'll start cleaning these up. Right then guys, next job on these, next setup, I've got some holes to drill and tap in the ends of all three of these blocks. So we're going to start with M3s and then we drop down to M2s and I don't even know if I've got an M2 tap yet so I may need to come back to those holes at a later date. But we'll certainly be able to get the M3 ones done and on one of them we've got another feature to put through the centre or not quite the centre, at a dimension through the face this way. So I've got my tools set out, we've got the edge finder in the chuck, so next job we're going to find the edge, get my setup zeroed out on my DRO, got my vice stop set, and largely the dimensions of these holes are the same in all the parts, and because I've machined all the parts to exactly the same size, there were thereabouts, I can just use the vice stop for my positioning. So I'll bring you back when we're finding where the parts are with the edge finder.
Well, there we go, guys. That's all three done with our M3 holes. And on this side, this particular one, the solid one, has only got the M3 holes in one end. Next task now on one of these two, only one, I've got four M2 holes, which will be a giggle, to put in in a pattern, in a rectangular pattern, into this face. Interestingly, the clearance between the major diameter on the M2 thread going through the plate this way and the major diameter of the M3 thread going in this way is half a mil clearance between the two. So incredibly close, but I'm following the drawings on the plans. That's what it says. So that's what we'll do, or that's what we'll attempt to do. So that will be our next operation. Right then, M2 tap anyone. This is going to be a giggle. I'm glad this isn't stainless. Well, there we go guys, that's got our four M2 holes in. Not looking forward to the next visit of that job. Um, that was a challenge, however, because this aluminium is quite sticky, so you, you can feel it binding up in the hole, but the small tap wrench I made, which is kind of right on the limits for an M2 to be honest, but there was plenty of feeling through that, and the tap follower, without both of those, that would not have been a successful job. And also, point to note, I just came to put my tapping drill back in the box and I thought that doesn't quite look like it fits right. So I went and just checked the actual size. I just pulled it out the index and used it. And I just went to check the size of the drill. We've actually drilled that. Should have been a 2.6 millimeter hole. The drill was actually a 2.5 millimeter drill. So I've given that tap some hard work to do there. But anyway, it's, it's done the job. So we tapped all four. So the next job now is to set up for the next piece, similar sort of setup to this, and we've got one special hole to go in the middle, which is a bearing support. So I'll bring you back when we're doing that. Right guys, we've got this loaded up in the four jaw. I went for the four jaw option. I've got some aluminium packers on all four jaws. I've cocked my centre hole up 
and I've got a tiny boring bar, high speed steel, not an ideal setup really because it's sticking out quite a way, I don't have a decent holder for that so that was the idea of this project really as well as building the project was to flush out what other bits of tooling and things like that that I need to make myself so I'm making a list as I go along so I need to figure out something better for small diameter boring so that's gone on the list so we're going to give this a try now and see we can open this out to 15mm and then put the counter bore in for the bearing Right guys, that should be us. Just got my bearing. I've done that 0 0.01 on the size. Yep, that's going to be a nice... <laughs> that's going to be a nice press fit in there. Good, that's that bit done. We'll get that bit out and take it to the bench, deburr it and then we'll close this episode out. Well there we go guys, that's got our first three pieces done of the engine so you can see where they fit. So this is going to be this piece, this piece with the small M2 holes in it is going this side and the M2 holes are for fixing on the, the valve gear, valve levers that drive the valve and the final piece that you've just watched me machine with the bearing bore in it is for the, you can't really see it on the model but it's this piece that you can see in the background there so this will sit in there and that's to support the bearing to support the flywheel and the crank at this side so that's the first three bits done not the most Exciting three bits of metalwork you'll have ever seen made, but for me the most exciting bits of metalwork because that signifies the start of what I hope is going to be a very very interesting project for me at least. So I'll just go to the bench now and we'll close this first video of the engine build out. And there we go guys, that's that's the first three bits done. The next job really on these and I'm going to leave this for a while is wet and dry 
all different grades to bring these to a really highly polished finish with well with wet and dry for a start to get rid of the machining marks and then we're going to use some up final assembly or just before final assembly of the whole thing we're going to use some autosol which is used in automotive really lots of motor motorbike sort of enthusiasts use that quite a lot for polishing up engine casings and things like that's really really good and you get a real mirror finish on aluminium it's quite a bit of work but that's what I want to do with this engine is really put the effort into making it look really really polished and really neat when it's finished so that's it for this first episode I hope you found that interesting I hope you've it's whetted your appetite for future episodes exciting times as almost every day at the minute there's packages arriving so I've, I've put a big order out for lots of different bits of material so you know flywheel material turned up today I think crank shaft main shaft material turned up and various other bits and pieces we've got some of the brass bits that we need for the valve gear turned up so I'm, I'm now set for some videos coming in the future as I said probably going to be interspersed with some other things so I've had a four jaw chuck that's arrived as well that I, I want to as I, I said in my recent blether video I've got some material sat here for a backing plate for that I probably want to get that fixed up um, and on the rotary table so that will probably come in between and then also there might be the odd blether video in between as well um, as we as we go along so hope you found that interesting thank you all for watching thank you all for subscribing thank you to the new subscribers and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else <laughs>